Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and just kind of give you my thoughts on, I guess, Righteous Fire this league. A lot of people have been asking and it's kind of like a level 100, uh, I can't call it a recap, but we're just going to talk about Righteous Fire basically. Uh, so this is the character that we ended up uh, going with and playing. Uh, we ended up hitting level 100 a few days ago at, I think, six, six deaths. Oh, let me make sure here. Yeah, six deaths. Uh, four of them were actually to full charge crucible. Uh, one of them was to fireball skellies. That was my first one, and I actually don't remember what the other one was. Maybe five to crucible. Uh, real fast, let me actually just go grab the flask off my other character, which I can give you guys a showcase of after this. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go back to this character. Then. Right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run a quick map. I know a lot of people always want like boss showcases and everything, but I don't really edit stuff. And honestly, unfortunately, my content more so focuses on mapping rather than like doing Ubers and stuff like that. I will say at my gear investment, you can absolutely do Ubers. Um, the thing is, you're not going to be able to face tank most of them. And you're kind of playing like a slower DPS build at that point. Uh, and I'll talk about my gear in a little bit once we finish this one quick map. Where is it in here, actually? Oh, yeah. Here's just a toxic sewers rolled normally, nothing crazy on it. Uh, I'm just going to go run this to show you guys kind of like how the clear works with the Oriath setup. So this is like a in-between explode, and I believe I've explained this in a previous video, but I'm just showing you guys again. So this is just Oriath's end, Avatar of Fire, which converts the cold and lightning from Oriath's into 50% fire. And then running a Fan the Flames Cluster Jewel with a little bit of Ignite Chance. I think I have, I don't even actually know where does it show. Chance to ignite from main hand. Is that 10%? That is complete shit. Honestly, I should probably take like a ignite note over here. Anyway, though, or you can run a flask for uh, ignite. I guess because I'm running a, a gold flask, that definitely does not need to be there. So that could easily be replaced. I cannot do this yet. Uh, I'm not taking this altar because I was going to do crucible, and I don't like doing crucible with these damage altars because it gets a little out of hand. Now, the, the advantage to this setup that you see here is naturally going to be the ability to clear faster. Um, not just necessarily faster, but it hits kind of like the weird corners you would normally miss in a map. Uh, with a setup like this, you it, the clear is just really, really good. Naturally, if you're going to pivot more to like doing Ubers or something, I would rather do this setup just because it's a lot easier to change. Basically, you're dropping Avatar of Fire. And after you drop Avatar of Fire, you're basically just dropping your Cluster Jewel, right? And then you can focus back on single target or being more tanky, kind of whatever it is that you'd like. The Chieftain, on the other hand, the other character that I made is the exact opposite. He is, is a speed clear demon, uh, which we'll show in a little bit. Overall, I have to say, though, I am pretty happy. This character did not end up as tanky as I would like for it to be, and I know the reason for it. The primary reason I would like to say is because um, I do not have the armor that I would like. I think I'm sitting at 84k, which is quite a bit. I think I want it to be around 100,000, which, to be fair, dropping this, you know, meme magic fine flask and using a gold flask would put me at just about 100,000 armor, maybe a little bit more, actually. I think a little bit more. And the other thing that I really, really wanted to do, well, I say I really wanted to do, I didn't really want to do it, it's just something that I should have done, um, is essentially getting an extra three max res at the bare minimum, which uh, will, would be on my shield and uh, elevating my max res on my body armor. So I'll just do a full charge crucible to show you what this is like. It can get pretty rippy, pretty fast, especially when you're running a gold flask and an Oriath's end, since those could be like, I don't know, basalt and sulfur, I guess? Sulfur would not be bad for this. Oh, I keep forgetting the manually curse on this character. I keep forgetting so much. Yo, where are you going, bud? Can you not? Okay, there's full charge crucible. It was a pretty easy one, not really a problem. Where did I get on this? I don't care. Okay, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my gear and tell you what I ideally would like in that slot instead. I think this will help give some direction for people who want to push far past kind of what I am currently doing. So uh, let's get started. Weapon. Uh, my weapon tree is mediocre. Um, it's okay. It has. I guess it's not mediocre. It's okay. 
It's got chance to gain onslaught since I'm not running an onslaught flask and fire multi. Uh, large sources of dex, large sources of int, area of effect, um, even um, uh, chance. Did I say chance again? Frenzy? I think I did. There's a lot of good modifiers. Ultimately, this basically just has two. It's got the fire multi, which I'd say is by far the strongest for damage. And then it's got the chance to gain onslaught, which just helps with clear. Uh, overall, though, on my weapon, it's not really amazing. Um, it's missing a lot. So the fracture is pretty low. It's a tier four. I'd like to have like maybe a tier two. The minion essence hit well, but uh, it doesn't have any. All it's got is burn. I would rather have multi so I can craft fire multi. I'd rather have plus one fire so I could craft fire multi plus one spell so I can craft fire multi. You get the gist. It's missing a stat there. That 36% burning is not comparable to like plus one. Uh, yeah, so over here I'm running my Herald of Ash to term Skitterbot. Just note that if you want to push more for bossing, do not run Herald of Ash in this variant. You want to drop Herald of Ash and run uh, Aspect of Spider. Spider is the same reservation, so you could literally toggle, basically just toggle them, right? Helmet. Uh, helmet, I uh, spent a lot of currency on trying to get plus two AoE. I tried five times and it failed, and then I kind of just got annoyed. Um, what I would like to do, ideally, is have plus two area gems unveiled somehow get like a 50 life roll and then craft physical damage taken as fire that would be ideal kind of not very easy to get because i'd have to exalt the life but yeah that's pretty much what we ended up with still worked out pretty well never ended up getting a helm enchant i think for single target your best option is fire trap burning ground i believe here i've got the awaken swift affliction righteous fire awakened alley focus life tap Remember, you don't want to do the swap from uh, Helmet RF to Body Armor unless you can afford your level 5 Awakened Gems, which typically you'll use them on RF as you're leveling, right? And a level 4 Empower is the big one. So usually what I do is I level a um, Elemental Focus and I level a Burn Damage for my RF when it's in my body. And then when I'm ready to do the swap, because my Helmet almost always has Burning Damage on it, I take that burn damage, give it to the fire trap, and then the RF retains the LE focus, and then you can sell your Awaken Ink AoE to try to get money for uh, your Empower 4, basically, which is here, right? And that this is what's giving me currently, like, the 1.1 uh, million fire trap, and it actually is a lot more than that because it's not... Well, I guess it's not technically a lot more than that. I don't have um, Aspect of Spider on, but anyway... Uh, right, amulet, not really very amazing. Uh, all it really has going for it is some stats with plus one fire. Realistically, if I got a 60 dex roll, I could change this to like a marble base. Uh, I would preferably like plus one in dot multi. I believe there is a deterministic way to get plus two. It just takes like 10 or 12 divines. But realistically, that is one of the best sources of prioritizing damage. I believe it's like you get a fractured dot multi, you alt roll till plus one. Uh, and then I think you need to regal and make sure it's a suffix, or I, I don't fully remember. But you can basically deterministically craft plus two amulets with Dom multi. It's just expensive, but honestly, in terms of currency investment, when you're at the spot I'm at, it is definitely worth it. Uh, shield. Shield's honestly a pile of shit. Um, it's got good res on it, like the T2 Chaos is definitely nice. But... The spell damage is not fire, it would definitely be way better as fire, and it is missing one vital thing. Um, instead of crafting with plus one fire, I would personally rather have two max res fracture because that helps so much with divine flesh because the max res is not Ellie res. So I would be 84, 82, 82, 84. And with a divine flesh setup, that would be incredible. Uh, so that's one big spot for uh, survivability uh, and while still retaining good damage on shields. There's so many things you can get. I just have fire damage and AOE. Uh, again, very similar to the weapon. The only difference is on shields. You can get awesome life rolls. You can get awesome max res rolls. You can get endurance charge rolls. There's so many cool things. There's also um, avoid shock. Avoid shock jewels would allow me to completely drop the affix on my jewel and the affix on my belt in favor of maybe like a recovery mod or something else. <clears throat> Over here, I've got my life tap frost blink flammability. Um, now, ring on the right essentially has that thick dex roll with a chaos res roll, the minimum frenzy, and a really garbage life roll. Ironically, I actually found this day one of the league and never replaced it all the way to level 100. It's kind of interesting to think about. You can tell because it's item level 70. Anyway, though, uh, ring's pretty good. Again, the purpose is minimum frenzy. Uh, each frenzy charge gives 4% more damage. 
The thing is, pushing into late game, it would be significantly better to get Frenzy on kill on my weapon and then pivot into um, double uh, Essence of Delirium crafted rings because that rolls upwards of 30% dot multiplier, which is insane damage. I just got lazy towards the end, right? Um, you can even see, like, in the POB, I believe, dot multi Essence of Delirium is huge for damage scaling because, I mean, if you think about it, you craft 19% fire multi on a weapon, you can add 15 dot multi on a ring. So, pretty incredible. The purpose of these rings were basically helping me cap my Chaos Res with life. Uh, this one had a suffix open because I was going to put Aspect of Spider, but then I just ended up staying Herald of Ash to level 100, so I ditched it. Okay, moving on to the body armor. Uh, you guys saw this craft. This is probably the one piece I'm actually happy about. Um, you know, I got pretty lucky crafting it. Unfortunately, it wasn't the best item level, so I couldn't get, like, Tier 1 or even Tier 2 armor. Still very happy with how it turned out. Um, I think that the newest addition to this patch with the, um, what is it? This modifier here, the 15% increased max life if there are no life modifiers on a body armor, is fantastic. It's actually so fun because how many times have you picked up a body armor and you look at it and it has insane stats, but no life prefix, and you're like, well, I'm not using that. So I really like this. I think I'm going to like it even more when we reroll SSF in a few weeks. It just, I feel it's going to make progression so much more enjoyable. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, main appeal of this versus Brass Dome. The Mono Reservation Efficiency saves me on needing an Enlighten. Uh, realistically, I would say Brass Dome is more defensive than this chest piece. Uh, if I elevate this to 2 max res, I'm not sure. Uh, Brass Dome would definitely be better at face tanking. This is going to sound really backwards, but elemental damage because of the armor value. This body armor would actually be better at tanking physical. I know, makes no sense, but that's how PoE works. And the main reason for that is the 6% physical damage reduction with the 12% physical damage taken as X element. That's the only reason this is really good against physical damage. Uh, but yeah, really like this body armor. It was a lot of fun. Really would like to elevate that one max res to two. So then we're sitting at three max res. This is elemental and this is not, but still three max res, huge. Uh, Legacy of Fury, never even got around to enchanting them. Uh, obviously, I would want 2% uh, boot enchant and then probably double corrupt at chance at max endurance charge and not really sure what else. Uh, remember on Legacy, and I could be wrong here, every 10% increased effect of Scorch is like an extra minus one res. So it doesn't matter if you buy from 30 to 39 as long as it's 40 on the breakpoint, I believe. <clears throat> here I've got Infernal Cry, Faster Attacks, Life Tap, and Shield Charge. Now, um, while I talk about this, there is one thing in the POB I showed but didn't give enough detail to. The respec on Call to Arms in the 80 to 93 section, you're not actually supposed to respec when you're level 80. It's more closer to the 93. I drop Call to Arms when I can clear without feeling like I need to spam my Infernal Cry. That is usually Six Link and Legacy of Fury, but the, you know things kind of change based off of your progression. I don't like spending the extra points on call to arms because once you get to a certain level of gearing every single point just feels so impactful uh these are my gloves we crafted them pretty early on pretty weak um they've got the fire exposure they've got the uh wall and enemies in your presence gain huge multi they've got life they've got chaos res they've got the double res ultimately the stats are just really low that's my only problem with them if I was going bigger, I would definitely try to unveil prefix for plus two AOE to throw my auras in for AOE, and then I get an actual AOE node. Uh, so that's that's pretty nice, to be honest. Speaking of AOE, can completely drop this and just put a point in life and basically get two points back to go somewhere else. Remember, you don't need AOE if your focus is more on bossing. This is all just for mapping. Uh, belt. Belt was crafted with the Avoid Shock, um, Avoid Shock Essences. This is for the super, super late game POB. And the purpose of this is to acquire 100% chance to avoid ailments, mainly shock. Once you have the shock secured, you can go ahead and slap in a storm shroud, which then makes it so your avoid shock applies to all elemental avoidance. Now, what I also did on this character, because I was sick of, you know, I wanted the face tank and I didn't like dying, even though you could just move out of the attacks. I went with a, um, a setup more towards preventing big hits. So I took Sanctum of Thought for the first off the armor, second the reduced extra damage taken from crits, then I took the 10% of physical from hits taken as chaos because 
this plus uh, Divine Flesh. Sorry. This plus this basically shrugs off the Chaos. Uh, and then, on top of that, I went ahead and got a Watcher's Eye, which essentially is just you take 59% reduced extra damage from crits, all affected by Determination. That puts me at 89% enemy crit damage reduction. Um, so that's kind of where that ended up. So overall, you know, pretty happy with the character. Uh, over in my gloves, we've got the Vitality, Arrogance, Molten Shell, and Malevolence. And then I think I showed my boots. Yeah, I talked about those. Yeah, overall, I was pretty happy with the character. There is so much room in terms of, like, min-max that you can do. I think I'm sitting around 5 million damage. I feel you could push to 8 million uh, just from, for example, getting the two dot multi rings with a plus one plus one dot multi amulet and going double curse that's probably pushing eight million right there um if not throw in spider instead of herald of ash i feel you're definitely getting very close to the value so overall like i said pretty happy with the character um don't really want to push it anymore so now let me show you guys the next project i'm working on this next character i don't know really where it's going we've only played it for um like a day um it's very flashy it's usually what i do when i make my first character in softcore i typically you know get to level 100 stop and then make a build that's for me more enjoyable now i say more enjoyable and i say new build it still runs righteous fire the only difference is it's got it's got a big boom on it now again this character is not really super geared it kind of is and kind of isn't you guys know how second characters work I think we've had one death on the character to something stupid. I wasn't really paying attention. I think it was a freeze box. Um, I've only played this character for eight hours, so it's still in the works, right? Uh, here is what you can expect from this character, though. It is a giga giga boom boom character. Uh, let me just switch this to uh, the nice flashbang MTX everybody knows and loves. Where's flashbang? Despair? Yeah, despair. Okay. So the purpose of this character is to take the clear from the Juggernaut and ramp it up. Uh, this character will be more squishy. Ironically deals comparable damage because we're a Chieftain and not a Jug. Uh, and the reasoning for the Chieftain, there are, there are a couple of reasons. I'll be honest, the primary reason, I wanted to see how Chieftain feels after not playing Chieftain for an incredibly long time. Uh, and I have to say I'm liking it a lot um the the damage scaling is really incredible on this character and i think a large part of it is because when they took that fire multi mastery away like a league ago this league i don't remember anyway when they took away the fire multi mastery it does kind of bring a little bit more value to playing chieftain since uh he gets fire multi the chance to ignite helps a lot with this current setup also your fire trap rolls ignite um the fire oh boy the fire pen, I believe, applies to the uh, explode because it's all fire. Um, so overall, this character synergy is pretty awesome. Uh, the other thing is, I'm currently generating endurance charges, and you'll notice I yoink them with my immortal call. However, whenever I use my immortal call and take endurance charges, I am essentially proccing the Velaco Storm Embrace, which is giving me 15% more damage. Um, which just feels incredible because of the way all of the multipliers kind of stack uh, paired together with explode setup like this with assonance. Um, yeah, so I like this character a lot. I think if it ends up being too squishy for me, I'm probably going to maybe pivot to like a Dawnbreaker. I think a Dawnbreaker would carry this character's survivability a lot. Um, again, this character is like a weird mixture. Some of its gear is really good and some of it is uh, really bad. But the primary focus of how this works, I will explain in just a minute. So, what you see on the screen is basically, I hit a mob with my Assonance Gentle Touch. If you have Elemental Weakness implicit, it overrides the temp. The temp never replies. So what that means is, whether you Frost Blink on a mob, you Shield Charge it in the face, you throw a Fire Trap, something hits it, you apply a Curse. Now, when that mob dies with the Curse, it goes kaboom. When it goes kaboom, that kaboom is physical. So we use the skill tree right over here. 50% uh, of physical, in this instance, just physical, is converted to fire. And then you take a fire mastery for 40. 4 plus 5 is 9, so that's 90% conversion. When that explodes, it's considered a hit. So that triggers your elemental weakness again. Then, 
you want to make sure you have a decent amount of chance to ignite because the explode is what damage type? Fire. Fire naturally has a chance to roll uh, and ignite. And when it ignites, utilizing the Fan the Flames cluster jewel, that creates a proliferation. And then because of the way assonance works, uh, which is <clears throat> non-curse auras you inflict are not removed from dying enemies, this means that the curse will linger above the target's head with a prolif. And then as a mob walks by, if that prolif kills the target, the chain kind of continues. Then if you slap on an Oriath's end, some of the explodes are just going to do so much more damage. Uh, those are the ones that help you killing rares and help also continuing the proliferation. Uh, this character doesn't have a crazy amount of AoE. I'm only rocking 117% right now. Of that 117%, they basically come from two items. So if I were to take off, well, okay, and the passive tree. This is a very expensive jewel called Unnatural Instinct. It's basically used to lag your computer with explode builds. You put it here to get like 36% AoE. And then this is a chess piece I've always had a lot of fun building around. It's called Blundelbore. It takes way too much strength to use. It gives you a lesser Brutal Shrine and Massive Shrine. Even though it doesn't have a health tag, it's kind of interesting because you can use the um, Life Mastery for 15% max life, even though it gives you a Massive Shrine because Massive Shrine is tagged as a buff and not tagged as a life modifier. Uh, so that's the purpose of this. It's really just for fun. I mean, I'm sure there are better chess pieces, but this is the fun one. Um, my weapon at the moment has some uh, chance to ignite, and uh, that's it. Over here, I've got some fire multi, so I'll be taking that. And again, this is my shield currently that I'm using on him. I do think I might switch over to a um, Dawnbreaker, but I'm not really sure. Uh, one thing is for sure, I need to get a Void Shock because I'm not shock immune on this character. So that is one of the big things. Um, the last thing to cover is kind of how I use this body armor. So in this section over here, I'm using an Elegant Hubris. Elegant Hubris is changing my Eternal Youth into Supreme Ostentation, which makes it so I ignore attribute requirements, which means I can level all my dex gems without having any dex which also means I can benefit from the Crucible Tree for bonus movement speed if your dex is below 100, which also means I can use a uh, 800 strength requirement chest without the need of actually having 800 strength. And then, if you guys remember kind of what I did for Glorious Vanity, I was I was in the market looking for something usable, so I actually sniped Slumlord for 80% minion damage with another Slumlord for 80% minion damage with Flask Effect Duration whenever I need to set this up. Minion damage is very strong, guys. Don't forget about it. Um, because I know I always, always get the question. I'm just going to go ahead and show you, like, my Righteous Fire tooltip before and after. So it's currently, like, 520,000. If I remove... Wait a minute. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 520,000. If I remove Spiritual Aid, it probably goes, like, 300k. It goes to 350k. Yeah, so uh, minion damage is very strong, guys. Don't forget about it. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. If you guys want to see this character, I'll be playing it live on stream for probably the next week. So I'm out. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all tomorrow.